Hey, what's up, After Buzzers? And welcome to another after show of The Romanos, where we're breaking down episode two, The Royal We. We'll be looking at another Romanov descendant, how their marriage goes down the pan, or in this case, is hanging off a cliff. Stay tuned and more. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, <laughs> let the buzz. <laughs> Such a good one to start with. <laughs> I got royalties in my DNA. Hey, wasn't that so, can I say, bad? Uh, <laughs> oh, the showrunners to have chosen this song. I loved it. Kill it. <laughs> Great music choice. Hey, what's up, Afterbuzzers, and welcome to the Romanos After Show. We're doing episode two tonight and looking into another cheating situation. However, this time, no pregnancy. Um, but uh, several, you know, indiscretion behavior there. Um, so my name is Yasmin Tanras. I'm your host and I'm joined by my lovely co-hosts from the left. My name is Amy Maestri. Excited to be back with you guys again. And I'm Taylor Gates. I'm excited as well. Yay! (laughs) So we're back in the hood. And tonight we're going to be discussing Michael and Shelly's relationship. So why their marriage is kind of setting off from the very beginning into an unhappy road. And then we'll go into when Shelly goes on, hops on a cruise ship and has a little something with sexy Yvonne. (laughs) (laughs) And then we'll delve into naughty Michael with Michelle, his short-lived love affair. All that and a special segment in which Taylor's going to break down some of the Russian culture and traditions. Yeah. Because that was actually highlighted in this episode a little bit at the gala. Yeah. yeah. So before we jump into all of that, I want to get a know your overall thoughts of this episode. Because it was completely different and we're also set in a very different country, very different family. So starting off with you, Amy, what do you think? Yeah, I thought this, it kind of took us on a weird journey. Um, I wasn't really sure because, I mean, I think they did a good job initially of really painting the picture of who these people were in their relationship. And I was excited to see where they went with that. Um, I found it entertaining, but in a very strange way. And I'm not really sure why. So I'm excited to get to kind of like delve. I feel like this is going to be a therapy session for me (laughs) um, to figure out exactly the core of why I enjoyed this episode. But um, I really enjoyed the performances in it, too. So. Mm How about you, Taylor? I was a little more eh on this episode. I just, I was very invested in the cruise ship because I thought that was very quirky and different than anything I've ever seen. I thought Michael's, you know, love affair storyline, while it had sort of different elements, like the jury duty aspect, I think was like kind of a cool choice for a setting. I don't know. I thought it was a little bit, a little bit cliched, a little bit like I wish I would have gotten more depth into Michelle as well to see like why he likes her besides just, you know, that she's beautiful. Um, but yeah, and then that ending was wild. That we need to definitely break that down too. <laughs> For sure. We are definitely going to get into that cliffhanger right there. <laughs> yes. I love these puns. Keep them coming. <laughs> Overall, I will say, I also thought, um, in a weird way, it was entertaining. It was it was a comedy to me, even though it is dark, a little bit dark. And um, as you said, Amy, let's start off with the therapeutic session. Because <laughs> I think this is going to be therapeutic. And we, we get the whole opening sequence of Michael and Shelley sitting in front of this therapist. So clearly we get an insight from the very beginning that their marriage is not working out. And um, what do you think of, like, in the first instance, the introduction of both of their characters? What did you think of Michael and then of Shelley as a character? I found that he was just, like, that stereotypical, mundane, unhappy guy who just doesn't really want to put forth effort into anything. Like, he was very much that kind of character. I think she came off as more type A in the therapy session than she ended up being. Like, I was like, oh, she's super type A. And then she it didn't really come off as much, I think, for her. But those are my initial reactions from them. Yeah. yeah, I definitely agree. I did like that we got that conflict right off the bat because they're two very clearly different people. Like, right away, you see that. I was kind of wondering if we are supposed to assume that Michael had depression. I don't know, just the fact that he doesn't really ever want to go anywhere or do anything. But I wish that, like, we would have gotten a clear answer to that because I personally don't 
really like his character, but yeah. I feel like if we had sort of an explanation, I would like sympathize with him more. Um, but I do agree with you that the performances were great. Um, Corey Stoll is the guy who plays Michael, and he, if you might know him from the first season of House of Cards, um, and he was one of the main draws for me to watch the show. And I think, like as always, all the actors were great. Um, and it's always interesting to see where you know people start things. And I think a therapist's office is you know a weird way to go. But <laughs> yeah. I kind of dug really, it. Yeah, it really set the premise. Yeah, and, uh, I like the reference that Shelley made to a movie about you know couples. Are we meant to like the same things mm -hmm. or not? Because clearly they're not. I mean, there's no steam between them. In the bedroom, they're like more, I feel like they're spending more time at the counseling than together. And so it's really, you know, an interesting perspective that she put forward as a couple that works together or a relationship that works together. Should they be liking the same things or should they have separate hobbies and likes? So what do you think in the sense that what do you because it's true like I agree with you Taylor like we don't really understand Michael where he comes from why he has such a sort of off-putting nature what was their relationship like when they first met because it must have been more exciting than that so I wonder in that sense what were their interests and likes and why has it not worked out yeah, I wish we would have gotten either like a flashback or just like some talk about like, do you remember when we used to do this? Or do you remember when we met and you were, po you know what I mean? Like, so we could get a sense of what it was like in the good times. And then I think we could mourn the loss of them more because I didn't find myself as invested as I think that like a viewer should be, if you know what I mean, because we didn't get the good times of them. So I'm like, sure, maybe this relationship should die because I'm only seeing <laughs> negatives right now. <laughs> And I think that's exactly why, like, I th probably now that you've said that, they've done a good job in distancing the audience slightly from Michael to not mm -hmm. have that likability factor because he even then responds, well, you're the one who arranges everything. And then he goes, and then when the therapist asks, well, what do you like? And he's like, well, whatever you like, I'll like. And that's, again, like, okay, such a passive aggressive response. Yeah, and it would have been nice, yeah, just to get a little bit more of a glimpse in that, because I think the show is doing a good job of strategically placing moments so that we can get a better idea in a short amount of time. Like little things like the fact that they drove there separately. Mm -hmm. You know, like very small things where she walks up to the car and you almost don't realize it at first because she goes to the passenger side and then you're like, oh, they drove there separately. Mm -hmm. So they're doing a really good job of like utilizing time that way. But yeah, something, whether it's, it could literally have been two sentences about, like you said, something that we used to do. But instead it was, yeah, Michael being passive and saying whatever you want to do. Yeah. So and I mean, that's a lot about his character but it still doesn't say much about their relationship yeah. together yes and I, and I, exactly i made that point as well when they part ways after the therapy session and get into separate cars and she's just like i need a drag of a cigarette <laughs> yeah. and let's get rid of this right now <laughs> and he's just profusely annoyed about it to her and then we see we get a glimpse of their personal life at home which again is like there's no feeling and emotion there but I feel I give it to Shelley who tries. She really does try. And I think we get a sense of her character versus his nature, especially when Michael is at the school giving advice to this kid where he says the big secret is that nobody is happy. It's like, no, no. dude. Yeah. That's your perspective. <laughs> and I thought it was really interesting that they sort of paralleled it. Like some of the writing on the show is very solid and really cool. Um, and we had that kind of mirror effect um, because at the end, Shelly tells Ivan, I'm basically a happy person. So I'm like, wow, yeah. this is like, <laughs> this encompasses who these people are. And so I love it when they kind of sneak those like, opposite lines you can just see subtly like they are not on the same page whatsoever exactly that's a good point and actually also from one of our viewers right now too i like this this is interesting from um comp sci 91 um when michael and shelly were just starting their relationship i bet michael acted more like he did with michelle yeah that's so a good point. very mm. valid point like because it was new it was fun it was dangerous there's like a danger element in it so i i really was like i'm like oh, okay I like That's that. Yeah, I can totally see that. Point. Yeah, because I mean, she is such an attractive woman as well. And I just keep on wondering, like, what's turned Michael off? 
of not just of her but of life it seems as well yeah, yeah. just seems to be so bored <laughs> yeah he's just like stuck so i want to um hop into because we are going to talk about their relationship as it ends but um before that we will go into then shelly's transition because he then goes into jury and we we know why <laughs> um and then i want to jump into shelly's experience on the cruise ship but before we get into that uh, Taylor's got a little message for our viewers. Yeah, so here at AfterBuzz, our network actually produces after shows for nearly all of your favorite TV shows. From dramas, reality TV, sci-fi, and more, there is no network that works harder to serve television fans. But we need your help. We're asking that you please subscribe to one or more of our YouTube channels. By subscribing to our channel, YouTube will suggest content that is tailor-made for you and will help AfterBuzz continue to grow. And if you're worried about pesky notifications, don't be because they are completely optional. So hit that subscribe button now for this channel and check out our other AfterBuzz YouTube channels as well. Let us know you guys did so in the comments and we will thank you on air. For now, thanks for being the best fans and for helping us be the ESPN of TV Talk. Yes, thank yeah. you, Taylor. We dearly, dearly appreciate you tuning in always to any after show at After Buzz. And um, please do comment as we're doing the show or afterwards because we like to follow up on your conversation. And as Konsky91, am I pronouncing it correctly? The yeah, user? Con- yeah, we've probably Con- we've probably both butchered it. So okay. <laughs> yell at us Sorry, in the comments about but that. We're too. giving you a great <laughs> shout out. Thank you for tuning in and leaving your live comments. We appreciate yeah. that. So please keep on doing that as well. Um, so yeah, now uh, let's jump in to uh, Shelly. So Michael has jury duty, right? And he could have, he's ultimately the crux as to why Shelly ends up on her own on the cruise ship. That was a very crude way of him being alone and pushing her away. Yeah. What do you think about his behavior there? And ultimately, obviously, it's because of seeing Michelle, who, by the way, Michelle's entrance, as she's stretching there in the middle of the waiting room, that was so unnecessary. (laughs) It seems like (laughs) such, like, a male gaze thing. I'm like, does this happen? Like, would this have happened for real? Yeah. I don't know. I can see you stretching your arms, but, like, doing a full-on, like, yoga session. (laughs) Straight up. I don't know if I believe this. This seems like more of a male fantasy to me. (laughs) Clearly written by a man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> That's what a lot of this episode felt like to me. And I think that they they if they if their main purpose was to make us just be like, I hate this guy, then well done. Yeah. <laughs> because immediately I was I did have a hard time getting on board with the fact that he was straight up going to just stall on a jury duty because he finds a girl pretty. I was like, I'm having a hard time buying into that, but also, like, some guys are creeps, so. And you're, like, ruining <laughs> the weekend of 11 people. Yeah. Like, come on. He is so self-centered. The yeah. worst. And you actually also get that sense within the therapy session, thinking about it because of his passive-aggressive behavior. It's like he really doesn't care or think about other people but himself and even his own needs. And if he's not being fulfilled... It's almost like he'll, he'll shun somebody out, says time for it, and he won't even care. Yeah, and it's like the perfect thing for him because he was able to blame, oh, no, I, it's, it's the law. I have to go to jury duty. Like, I, j- literally every time he spoke, I just hated him more and more. Yeah, <laughs> just make up something to make it sound so legit and yeah. manipulative. <laughs> then poor Shelley is then on her, and, and, and she's, like, trying so hard. She's married into the Romanos family, as we find out, and... um. And um, based on him saying, oh, that's so cool about this cruise cruise ship, which gives the descendants an opportunity to get to know a bit of their lineage and where they come from, she sets this entire thing up. And they lose a lot of money because of him. $5,000, they said, I think. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Oh, boy's a tutor. What is, like, where is this money yeah, coming honestly. from? <laughs> honestly. I love kids. how you just said that. <laughs> But it's so true. It's like, how can he or anybody just let it slide that easily? And how can he just not? I just, you know, we've already said we're not on his side. And um, so let's go into Shelly being on the cruise ship. I was happy for her. I was truly happy for her 
to actually have a moment to herself. And I loved how the elder lady said, you know, you're going to have more fun without him. That was very sweet. Although the man yeah. was giving her a hard, hard time. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was a nightmare. <laughs> he did not like her at all. <laughs> was he Romanoffing her? Oh. Romanoff, yes. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. There's been a lot of uh, ro- Romanoffing yeah. jokes. That I, I, I don't like the Romanoffing. <laughs> Romanoff on out of here. <laughs> Lots of jokes that uh, uh thank you. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks to our week. producer Tony the Tony. <laughs> Shout out to him. Um so she was absolutely divine and so composed and you know still held up her let's say her demeanor as a married woman. And then she meets this lovely Ivan. Ooh. So I was hoping there would be a little bit more between them two, honestly. I feel like she deserves that. Um, what do you think of them two, that relationship, how it unfolded on the ship? Yeah, I, for selfish reasons, would have liked to see them, like, have more. Because I'm like, you deserve it. Your husband's a douche. <laughs> like, you deserve it. Go get it. But I'm still kind of glad that they didn't. Because it does, it really, like, keeps it clear of, like, yeah, he is the bad guy in this, you know, like she actually is good. Like, even though you thought that she had her moments where she might go for it and she still didn't. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm happy with that decision. I definitely agree. Like she, yeah, it just says so much about her character that like, yes, they like kiss, they might made out a bit, but they never like took it there and Michael took it there. So it's like, that's the difference between those two. Um, but I'm so glad that she, like, she lived her best life on she that did. cruise ship. Like, she was hanging out by the pool, having all these fancy dinners. I was like, good for you, Shelly. Yeah, yeah, and didn't she look absolutely divine in her dress yeah. when she oh went to God. the pool? She's I nearly beautiful. thought she wasn't going to go. And I thought, why not, woman? But I'm so glad she did. And, yeah. you know, that's when they really connected. And uh, the show, what did you think of the gala? That was pretty phenomenal. I didn't I I learned a few things and I'm very uh, excited to hear that when you bring up some of the Russian cultures and traditions there because they were talking about the show of the little people that do these performances in a comedic way (laughs) what else did you pick up from that because I felt like it was very interesting to see yeah it was it was odd I was like what will the entertainment be like on this but (laughs) I thought all the dancing was really cool and I'm gonna share mostly some like dancing trivia with you guys um for a special segment but like the dancing and like the costumes and the music and just how they work together was so neat like the Russian like dance culture especially I think is so incredible to see yeah oh my gosh yeah the way like I don't understand what their legs are (laughs) like (laughs) What do they do? (laughs) I was so enthralled by every time, like, they had the performances, not only by the crazy, amazing performances, but also her expression, just watching her love it so much, like, just, like, uncontrollable, like, childlike laughter at certain points and, like, taking the pictures and, again, like, she lived her best life. She did. Get it, girl. Yes, exactly. (laughs) I love that comment on the legs. I'm like, I'm actually curious now thinking about it. How do they train their legs? Like, what do they do (laughs) to just stamp like that? Some magic. I saw the wheels start to turn. I'm truly imagining this right now. (laughs) But, oh my God. Okay, it was kind of bizarre, though. A a, a horse? A horse on a cruise ship? (laughs) Yeah, like how? I guess you can, I don't know. It's just like, where do you keep him? (laughs) Is this a typical thing I have to ask? Because I've never been on a cruise ship, but... Do they do anything like this? And I find it very interesting. How Obviously, this is part of the show, but it's like to really... Because there's articles out there um, that I've seen online where a lot of people are claiming to be descendants of the Romanov. So I really wonder, like, you know, a lot of us are curious about our lineage and, and you know, having such a big line like that, they're going to make a cruise ship for the family. <laughs> That's a pretty interesting idea i felt i did think it was really interesting an offhand comment that shelly made though um when she was talking to um ivan and she i think he asked like where her family from and she said oh who cares and i was like "Ooh, that's a major difference between her and michael too because like he wants to go on this cruise ship and discover his like lineage and then she doesn't even really care to know which I thought was just, like, an interesting little moment that they included in there, too. Yeah. Yeah, because I think it speaks to, like, the pride factor, too, of, like, this family and their history. Just that, like, this is a thing that they do. Yeah. <laughs> like, you said that they have this, like, whole thing on a cruise. And I found it really interesting, too, that it was such a patriarchal 
society mm-hmm. on that boat you know whether it was her trying to introduce herself to one of the wives and the husband yeah. steps in mm-hmm. or the man you know like when she first got checked in like it really like you're just like oh wow like they really take this seriously and they might still be stuck in the early 1900s <laughs> <laughs> well that's a very interesting point that both of you have made because it goes back to what we were talking about last week of why matthew Reno is probably putting this out there about the questions of like um, our DNA as Kendrick Lamar (laughs) (laughs) and uh, bloodline and traditions so you have perhaps the older generation that is definitely more engaged with that aspect versus modern like Shelley saying well who cares and so this is like a very interesting discussion and notion within society of you know what 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 do we care about like where we come from and what traditions we maintain or should we even regard them you know and I I, but it's interesting to see all these different cultures and and that's why again I'm excited to know more in our special segment um but I want to go back to the uh before we jump into Michael and Michelle's affair Shelley and Yvonne are a very cute couple in a sense of how they even embrace each other. It was, mm. it was, uh, I felt like a very graceful way. Mm. And I loved how she said when she, st- she stopped and didn't let him in because she stood in front of the wrong door on mm-hmm. purpose. <laughs> and he says, well, what's wrong? And she's like, I'm not going to answer that. And obvious for obvious reasons. And he he responds, well, he's a lucky man. I have so much respect for her and even for him mm-hmm. because he wasn't even pushy or anything. And he knew exactly where she was coming from and what type of a woman she is. Whereas <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to say something more to Yvonne and Shelley, we'll dive into that relationship. No, I oh, agree yeah. with you. Yeah. I think they was very like pure in a way. Yeah, it was nice yeah. seeing the other side of it, like how it can go yeah. if you're not a garbage human. Yeah, and they really were like, you know, two souls that were a little bit lost within their relationship, yeah. seeking solace within within each other. So that was lovely. And now, uh, Michael and Michelle, as mentioned, Michelle, I feel like she's such a, uh, she's got this uh, way of presenting herself, very strong, stern. She knows exactly what she wants and she'll get what she wants. Mm-hmm. But I was surprised. I was surprised how she led herself to be taken by Michael. What do you think about that? I agree with you, although I think that it was kind of interesting and kind of cool to see her after, like, their whole night at the cabin, how she was the one that was like, this is a one-time thing. Like, oh, you've never done this before? Like, she clearly has done this before. And I think that's sort of a reversal, you know? Because I think in a lot of shows it would have been Michael doing that. And so the fact that it was, like, Michelle being the one to just, like, cut it off and, like, no strings, no emotions attached, I thought that was, like, kind of an interesting, like, surprise and flip of what we usually see. And I thought that was, like, that was admirable for the writers to kind of turn it on its head. Yeah, because at first I was like, I had such high hopes. Like, I was like, be smarter than this. Like, be smarter. And then they, you know, she buys into everything. And then I was like, oh, wait, though, she didn't. She, yeah, this is like, she's literally like a serial adulterer. Is the, you know, like, oh, did you clean up? Yeah, um, coffee, cigarette, you know, like all that. Like, she's done this a million times before. (laughs) And so, yeah, I like that. I was like, oh, wait, yeah, she is smarter than by like she just wanted to do it to you know she wasn't like just buying into all of it she wanted to do it and then just leave it be she's certainly a smart cookie yeah because i felt like in the first instance i thought oh she's kind of annoying because she knows the power that she holds because she's such a fine lady um and i liked you know there was a jump cut at one point of which the way she smokes a cigarette, she looks you in the eye and mm. she's very like, she stands her ground versus Shelly. There was a jump cut moment where Shelly is smoking her cigarette. Then as soon as we've seen um, Michelle, who's like, she looks very worried. And and it's, again, sort of the contrast of their personality. Mm. Interesting. I, I didn't like even that, notice yeah. that, but I want to like go yeah. back and see that <laughs> moment, though, because I love good transitions like that. Yeah, yeah. it was a real interesting one. I was like, wow. As you were saying about Michelle's character, in the first instance, I didn't like her because of the way that she knew she can manipulate the situation, still allowed Michael to hold, let's say, everybody hostage within this jury, (laughs) jury duty, poor things. And um, she 
went along, I feel like she's a very adventurous woman mm -hmm. because she ends up going to the crime scene with Michael. Yeah. Michael was very annoying to me in the way that he got her number and decided yeah. to like play it all up. And they end up in this Irish pub. Her <laughs> sensual dancing. Oh my God. She's <laughs> so like, she's so beautiful. I know, she And she played it so well because like that character knows how beautiful she is too. Mm -hmm. And I think the casting on this was so spot great. on. So good. Credit to the casting director on oh, this yeah. one. I genuinely thought after that, when they were kissing like crazy, which was very different to the way that uh, Shelly and Yvonne were embracing, it was very rough. Mm -hmm. And I actually thought at one point that Michael was going to kill her. Did you not think when they got to the woods, it was dark and he goes, get out. Yeah. And she was a little like, I felt like she might have been scared. Yeah, I th I did too. As soon as it was dark in the woods, I was like, oh my God, he's going to kill her. But then, yeah, when they got inside and almost started like kind of playing roles with that, I was like, oh my God, this is so like predatory too from him. Like, oh, she likes adventure. She likes true crime. I'm going to take her here. I'm going to take her on this wild ride. Let's go to the bar. Like he took her to a murder scene. <laughs> and then, like, took her out to the woods. They're both kind of, like, scary, to be honest, though, because she's like, if I were to kill someone, it would be random. I'm like, oh, okay, you've thought about this. Like, they, they deserve each other, maybe. <laughs> both a little bit of, like, maybe psychopaths. <laughs> well, there you go. Like, exactly. And I feel like she almost planted an idea subconsciously into his mind, the way that she was talking about how she, she would get away with murder, essentially. Mm -hmm. Because her point of view was, if you really want something and someone is in your way, how hard can it be and and so I almost feel like we wouldn't have expected it as a viewer as to what comes towards the end but it really got <laughs> the wheels turning within his head that's so true yeah because <laughs> yikes wow <laughs> wow we come at, at, we come back then to the therapy situation in which he breaks down mentally all because of this woman where he's like now I finally know what I want and he really goes out there. So yeah. should we talk about the ending, which was super shocking? <laughs> like, you know, I was also like the therapy session was so interesting to me too, leading up to it. Cause I think even Shelly was just like, I don't know what this means. Like she was very taken aback by the fact that he was that emotional. Cause I'm sure he's never been that emotional yeah. in front of her either, but also like, what? Like it was a very confusing message. Cause in his head, you know, he's not even talking about her. Yeah. And so I think it was a great lead in to to that last scene. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And the fact that she just brought him a sweatshirt back, I was like, oh, she's pure. Like, she's so cute. She's got a sweatshirt. <laughs> but then do you think there was an element of fakeness between the two as well? Oh, definitely. Because they're both yeah. like, oh, we missed you. Like, sort of each but other. Like, they, did yeah. they? No. Like, not they had so much sure. fun without each other. It's like, she was going through the pictures, reliving what a great time she had while he wasn't even, he was looking at his phone yeah. to see if Michelle. Yeah. So yes. it was like, they were both in their own own world in at that, that point. Very good point, yeah. And, I, and, and yeah, Michael, very distracted. And I can't believe how needy he became oh, and afterwards. <laughs> and, and then how he really pushes his wife off the cliff. I thought it was like a dream at first. I was like, oh, he's imagining this. No, he pushed her off a cliff. Hard. <laughs> like, she's hurt. And then I... As soon as they were walking up and they didn't have any music and they were showing them walk for a really long time, I was like, oh, my God, he's going to kill her. Did you think that? Yeah. I actually preempted that. Yeah, because my roommate hates watching TV with me. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, he's going to kill her. <laughs> but I was wrong the first time, to be fair. But, yeah, I think they did such a good job of building the tension with it. Because I think it almost would have given something away a little bit more. But the fact that, like, they were just hiking without any sound but you see his face just kind of you can tell like something's happening and i was like oh my god he's gonna kill her but i love that he pushes her and then she's just grabbing up yeah she's like okay <laughs> the murderous eyes and then the fact that he pushes her and then he's like there's a peaceful moment until we're like ah! <laughs> <laughs> you know she's cursing and everything hanging off this cliff i thought oh my god she's still alive yes <laughs> yeah. yes you survive you go gal and then she actually falls to the ground i thought she wasn't gonna get up but she starts walking yeah that was kind of impossible but then it's that de determination get away from your murderous husband yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, seriously. That's why I love the line, I can't believe it took me this to realize this is over. (laughs) Your husband just tried to murder you. (laughs) See, and that's like dark comedy right there. Yeah, (laughs) perfect. (laughs) And then I just loved how she was riding in the car and, you know, she was obviously traumatized, but then she's like smiling away, yep. Uh, uh, what what was it? A pepper spray that she used as yes, well to blind yes. us. Good on you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get into our special segment right now. I'm dying. We've been dying to hear about some of the uh, traditional norms of the Russian culture, as we've seen at the gala. Yeah. So take it away, Taylor. Yeah. Okay. So I did some research about the dances. Oh, thank you. I love this music. Um, (laughs) Many of the Russian dances actually became known in the 10th century, which is a long, long time ago. And um, the Russian dances are influenced by a lot of different cultures, a lot of different places, just because of the location and the size of Russia. A lot of, like, migrants came in. There was a lot of trading involved. So Mm -hmm. there was, like, a big exchange of cultures. So it's, like, a very rich infused with a lot of different places which is cool the lower classes usually perform the dances while the upper classes watched which makes sense especially on the ship i think we definitely saw that um the characteristics of the dances are usually squat work stomping and knee bending elements definitely saw that especially the knee bending elements like you were talking about wild the costumes are very detailed and lots of red is um kind of put into the costumes because the russians associate red with beauty which might be because oh. the logo's red maybe because of that which Good. you know fun little fact for you guys okay. um there's a lot of holiday themed dances like there's like seasonal ones for like fall and winter and different things like that and two of the really popular dances i'm gonna butcher the names of these but i'm gonna tell you anyway <laughs> the barnia and the Korovod. so if if i'm not pronouncing that right i know don't yell at me <laughs> But those are two really major ones that they're known for. It's Ruski. Yes. <laughs> it's pretty hard. It is. I'm not great at it. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to butcher a dialect or accent or anything. I'm, you know, just <laughs> trying as well. I tried really hard, guys, but teamwork. Yeah. It's really interesting what you were saying about the dancers, though, that it was performed by the lower class. Granted, I would understand that. But nowadays, you know, even uh, Michelle, as a character, says how she was a ballet dancer mm-hmm. at the uh, Pittsburgh, with the Pittsburgh yeah. Ballet school and I feel like it's very highly regarded when you are a ballerina of some sort from Russia yeah and I don't think it's I mean probably lower class but higher class will regard it as something special to be a part of yeah yeah that's true so I wonder how societal norms have shifted from there yeah now let's get into the news and gossip of this which Amy's gonna take away after us TV news So, um, jumping off of some of the Russian history, um, this was crazy to me. Um, So, apparently, uh, Carrie Stoll, who plays uh, Michael in this, his wife is a Romanov descendant. Really? Yeah. So, he told Vulture um, at the premiere, so um, they're talking about uh, the episode and how he's actually the one in it, but um, he said, but his wife, actress Nadia Bowers, is an actual descendant of the Romanovs. Stoll told Vulture at the New York City premiere, the Romanovs on one side and the, gonna uh, butcher this as well, Deberanis, who were the family of Napoleon's second wife on the other side. So her family is literally just all royal across the globe. That's crazy. Um, Yeah, so incredible that she was actually, that she is actually a descendant. Um, and then he got to do this role. So I found that to be pretty cool. Pretty yeah. crazy. He's the Shelly in the situation. Yeah. Though. <laughs> He's the he Shelly. married into, yeah. <laughs> he is, in fact, the Shelly. Um, and then I also wanted to call out, um, I noticed that um, the woman who plays Michelle, um, Janet Montgomery, she um, is pregnant. Her and her Aww. husband are expecting their first. So um, I saw her husband, too. My God, that's going to be a pretty baby. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so congratulations to them. They are they are pregnant now. So. Oh. Yay! Congrats! <laughs> baby on the way. Yes. Lil Romanoff. Lil, Lil Romanoff. Lil Romanoff. <laughs> well, yes, let's hope it's, you know, with her real husband and not <laughs> another Romanoff. <laughs> But see, yeah, I, I mean, off the back of that, that's incredible news and gossip right there. Yeah. I can't, but when I saw that, I was like, no, nah, that's too good. When I was looking some stuff up and I was like, no, that can't be, that's it can't cool. be that easy. But yeah, 
His his wife is legit royalty. So. I wonder if Matthew Weiner knew that, and obviously, I mean, he must have done. And or, it's pretty yeah. amazing how yeah he has married into a, a true Romanov descendant. So I'm, yeah. I'm curious to know as to what she thinks about the show. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of want to look up some more stuff on that. And like I know we mentioned earlier, guys, on the chat, um, if you know anything more about it too, let us know. Yes. You know, hit yeah. us up afterwards, comment if you know any more backstory on his wife or how maybe his casting came about. Um, school us. Let us know. Put yeah. it in the comments after. Yeah, yeah. Well, amazing. Love that. And and Michelle, pre- well, not Michelle, but Janet Montgomery. <laughs> pregnant. Yeah. Michelle's probably pregnant too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. How it works. <laughs> well, who knows? And, and I love, like, if we're just going to finish up before we finish up, you know, I just love how she stood her ground in the show and, yeah. you know, to stay true to her husband. She knows who she is. She knows she goes on the side, but she will always come back to her husband. And yeah. That, um, yeah, I think that's that was a pretty strong way to end it between the two of them. Yeah, agreed. So we don't really have predictions for this show <laughs> because it's an anthology, but we can imagine. We can yeah. imagine what mm. happens to the characters. So what mm. do you think, Taylor? What do you think happens to them? Oh, man. Maybe Shelley, like, what route is she going to go? What's going to happen to Michael? <laughs> I may I if I were Shelly Lee, I'd call the police. <laughs> I'd be like, he pushed me off a cliff. We need to get him either help or imprisonment because yikes. Maybe maybe Ivan and his you know horse finalist wife <laughs> also break it off, and we can have the ship of our dreams, Shelly and Ivan, Shivan, Shivan. It's gonna rise. It's oh, gonna rise. <laughs> Or Siobhan. <laughs> Siobhan, true. Get it trending, guys. <laughs> Hashtag Shyven, bring it on. <laughs> and what do you think, um, Amy? Man, well, I just, I love that, again, like, it's a screenplay the way they did it. The opening image of an unhappy couple. The guy's kind of a douche. She seems kind of nice, but you're not sure. And then getting to see it end with him just miserable, broken and alone, and her kind of riding off into the sunset. I kind of think she's going to just be by herself. Yeah. And she's going to live life and, you know, just kind of go do her thing and be very happy with it. And maybe, maybe Shivan happens down the road. But I think right right. now she's just going to be her and like live her life again. And he's hopefully going to go to prison. So, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Or get some help. Like, seriously, I, I think, okay, maybe he will also go see the therapist on his own because, you know. Let's hope. He might, he might want to. (laughs) He needs to. He needs to, Yeah. (laughs) Either that or he goes back and tries to kill Michelle. Oh. Oh, wow. So you think he's going to be a serial killer? Maybe. I don't know. Some things have been ingrained into his mind. (laughs) Who knows? Who knows? But I agree. Well, I hope Siobhan or Shivan happens. (laughs) That would be nice. I feel like them two as a couple would make an adorable family. Um, And yeah, Michelle's just going to remain happily ever after with her husband. She'll still do her things on the side. And Michael... We'll see. I don't even want to say. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for tuning in next week at the same time, 6 p.m. PST Mondays. We break down the Romanovs and you can find me on social media at Yasmin. Tanris. And where can we find you, lovely ladies, on social media? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Amy Maestri. You guys can find me on Instagram at Taylor. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Instagram at Taylor underscore Kate's underscore. Twitter at Alphabet underscore Ann. Um, I also host the Lawn or SVU Good Place and Legacies After Show on Thursday. So check those out. Yes. Thank All you right. so much. And Thanks, don't guys. warm enough too much. <laughs> 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 Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 